Why during the 1950s did something happen that resulted in a 70 year stagnation in a field called quantum gravity? Quantum gravity is like a startup that cannot ship a product after 70 years. And it's still taken over in theoretical physics as sort of the prestige theory field. And quantum gravity, is, is there an application for this that they were attempting to achieve? It's not a precursor to technology so far as we know. But what happened was quantum gravity was a replacement for something that used to be known as the unified field. So Einstein wasn't chasing quantum gravity. He was chasing unified field theory. That fell out of favor. Unified field theory becomes sort of like a joke, old-timey expression for the future of physics. And we substituted quantum gravity for the merger of quantum theory, quantum field theory, quantum mechanics, and gravitational physics under general relativity. How is it that the field became convinced that something which clearly doesn't seem to work and has had all of the resources, all of the best minds at its disposal, it sucks up everything, and it, it just doesn't work? To be specific, yeah. like how many people are working on this problem and how many people have been working on this problem for 70 years without progress? I would say that the period between 1953 and 73, there are parallel things. Quantum gravity is not the mainstream at all, okay? So real physics is happening between 53 and 73 by anybody's understanding of it, okay? Okay. Uh, one single individual who is the most dominant mind on planet Earth at the moment, uh, effectively Voldemort, the person whose name we are a little bit afraid to invoke and, and cause wrath, said in 1984, no, string theory is the way. This anomaly cancellation was unexpected, and it clearly points to the fact that we are, ladies and gentlemen, we are about to quantize. Who's that right? person? Edward Witten. And in, in physics circles, you're not allowed to... Bring this guy up? We talk about him. Everybody talks about him. But to challenge him? Think about Agent Smith. Think about playing one-on-one -on -one with Michael Jordan in his prime. He's like, that good. Joe, I don't think... I, I'm dumb enough not to be intellectually afraid of anyone else on planet Earth at this point. I am terrified of this person. Really? And has never made contact with the physical world. So it's like one of the greatest conundrums. So, so, so let me get back to how crazy. What do you mean by never made contact? No Nobel Prize, never predicted something that turned out to be true, never pointed us to do an experiment that was then validated. So 100% of his efforts have been not making contact with physical reality. Oh, this is, I'm sorry, like you have people like Michio Kaku who are in the string theoretic school. Mm -hmm. Sean Carroll is very sympathetic to it. Mm -hmm. You need to understand this story. 1957 conference at the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill. One of the most eminent mathematician physicists, guy who was first ranked at Cambridge, was a guy named uh, Herman Bondi, an Austrian, I think, mathematician. And his paper is about negative mass in general relativity. If you have two masses, in general, they always attract each other gravitationally. But what if somehow you had a different kind of mass that was negative, just like you could have negative and positive charges? Oddly, the negative mass is still attracted just the same way to the positive mass as if it, there was no difference. But the positive mass is always repelled. So you get this weird solution where the negative mass chases the positive mass, and they go off to like, you know, unbounded acceleration. So Bondi was thinking about why is it that we've got these artificial conditions in general relativity, which we impose by hand. They're not the same beautiful marble that Einstein used for his field equations, but we throw some extra crappy stuff in called positivity conditions to stop general relativity from giving us madness. So Bondi started asking the question, maybe we shouldn't. Maybe what you think of as madness has meaning. And this is why this, this conference, which is a confluence of the two families, the Wittens and the DeWitts, with Feynman and Wheeler and all of these unbelievable characters in attendance, is this pivotal, strange experience, is that people are smoking the ganja on extending general relativity to places that it's never been extended. And the highbrow version of this doesn't work, and the lowbrow version of this doesn't work so far as we know. The lowbrow version is called pseudoscientific anti-gravity, gravity shielding. 
electrogravitics, gravitic dynamics. The highbrow version of this is called quantum gravity. And all the most respectable people are in it, and it doesn't work. And you can't say, why are we doing this if it doesn't work? Why can't I say, Ed Witten's great, but he made a terrible blunder. David Gross should... David Gross and Ed Witten should be in front of the community explaining why did you take all the smartest people, all the resources, all the attention. Michio Kaku, get Michio Kaku in here with me. Michio Kaku is out of control. Sean Carroll is covering up for this as well. In what way? They are too kind. Brian Green. Like I had this interchange with Brian Green where I said, you know, we're not being honest about the failure of string theory. And Brian's like, oh, well, maybe we were a little bit exuberant. And I, I blurt out, Institute for Arts and Ideas, I blurt out, that's like saying Milai. <laughs> my, my, Milai was irrational exuberance. No, you put a lot of people's careers in the, in the shredder in order to have this quantum gravity experiment, which is like, you know, the people bowing and praying to this thing that doesn't work. The dog doesn't hunt. And anybody who questions it as a crackpot, I'm done with this, Joe. Like, you want to come at me and say, Eric doesn't know what he's talking about? I'm debating physicists. I'll debate anybody with the possible exception of Ed Witten, who still scares me, but I'll probably debate him too. In an open forum, we have got to purge the physics community of its quackery. And the quackery is coming from the high prestige version of this. The high prestige version of anti-gravity is called quantum gravity, and it just doesn't work. They've crawled into the map, the prison built by Einstein, and they know that it's not right. Because there are these two singularities. There's this singularity at the beginning of time, which we call the Big Bang, assuming the time were one-dimensional. And it's part of something called the Friedman, Robertson, Walker space-time model. And there's another one at the bottom of the black hole called the Schwarzschild singularity. And the fact that space and time kink at these two points is an indication that we have something wrong to a mathematician or a physicist. It says your equations work pretty well right up into the point where there's some error that you have that you don't understand and you have like a division by zero error. And if you could figure out your error, you don't know what sin you committed, but the way that you know you committed a sin is that you have a singularity. So they know that there's some successor theory. And they'll give lectures about space-time is doomed, and I'm going to talk about non-commutative geometry. But these are all ways of avoiding the fact that you haven't done your homework for 50 years, okay? So, like, there's some class that you're supposed to show up to, and you haven't been in a long time. Mm. You don't want to show up and suddenly say, what? What's going on? Um, that's what's happening. They are living inside of Einstein's model. So when you say something, they'll say, well, that's impossible because you can't go faster than the speed of light. And it's like... That's a space-time concept. That's an Einsteinian concept. You're not thinking post-Einsteinian. You're not thinking about recovering Einstein, or Einstein is what we would call an effective theory. You're thinking that you really live in space-time, so you know what you can do. And then you fold your arms and say, well, that's impossible. 